G'day, it's Andy Goulet, OK Boss Frog. It is the greatest privilege to be with Lifehouse today in the beautiful Coffs Harbour and surrounds. Uh, you have one of the most amazing uh, leaders uh, that's worked with youth for over decades and decades. The amazing Pastor Lottie is amazing, even better wife that supports him in everything he does and great family, but it is a great honour to have a chat to you today uh, and to fill you in a bit on the Boss Frog story. Firstly, a bit of my background. I'm actually an accountant. I did a Bachelor of Business Accountancy, QUT, worked seven years as an accountant. Also, I'm uh, a pastor at a local church in Bris Vegas, doing community outreach work up there to, to kids in local areas. Also, the chaplain for the mighty Queensland Reds Rugby Union. Uh, which is amazing. And I've also been a downhill skater for 39 years. I haven't really figured out how to stop yet, just love going fast downhills. So a bit of a skateboarding pastoral accountant. But back in my uni days, and don't uni students do it tough, eh? All those 12 contact hours a week they've got to do. We should put some prayers out for those uni students really struggling out there with those 12 hours a week. Uh, but back in my day, I actually got involved with the local church in my area. And for me, I sort of, uh, th that experience is like, I, I relate it to like a spiritual wedgie experience where I got absolutely reefed, undies over my forehead, whereas very much like Goulet, life's not about you, your accounting degree, your mates, your snowboard trips, your Reds memberships. It's actually about the big fella and others. And it challenged me that life's not about me, it's actually about others as well. And uh, I got really challenged, but I thought, what could I do? You know, what, what I used to I rock up to a church in Brizzy and see all these amazing, talented people that could sing and do music and speak and I was going, wow, you know, what could I do or make a contribution in my world? Uh, so I remember driving down Logan Road or we call it Bogan Road on the south side of Brizzy and past 7-Eleven or 11 as we call it and uh, there were all these little punk skaters setting fire to these boxes down the side alley of the 7-Eleven. So as all good, you know, citizens do, I kept driving straight past. But I really felt to go back. I had my skatey in the back of the car and I thought I better not let these little grommies burn down the 7-Eleven at 11 at night. So I ripped my little Mazda 3D3 power around and legged it into this little Sullivan, stuck my head out the window. I said, boys, what are you doing? They said, oh, nothing. I said, want to go for a skate? I said, oh, that'd be awesome, man. So I pulled about 17, my Mazda 3D3 power back in the day when you could do that. I took him to a skate park in Brisbane City called Paddo Skate Park. But I started doing this every Friday night. I rock up to my park and some nights would be three kids would rock up. Other nights, 30 would rock up and ring my mates with advance to help pick them up. We started this like skateboarding club in my local area. And there were some kids from pretty messed up backgrounds, pretty dysfunctional backgrounds, a lot of drug and alcohol issues. And they were wandering the streets at all hours of night. And, you know, you know, there were some really heavy situations with a lot of these young kids. But then after about 15, months of working with these kids they used to get me in all sorts of trouble too these kids they used to like steal change and other Sent a console in my car and they used to hide their drugs at my mate's place and I'd find their stash and hide it somewhere else and uh, it was getting me in all sorts of trouble. But then uh, some of these kids started to come out of the drugs and out of the alcohol and actually uh, get involved with a couple of youth groups in the area and getting around good environments. And it's amazing you put young people in good environments, you get good outcomes. Put them in negative environments, you get negative outcomes. And we started to see some changes in these kids and after another three years, we started five more of these youth clubs all around Brizzy, uh, working with about 120 of these kids a week. But then they got to year 12, went to that lovely, wholesome youth festival on the Gold Coast we love to call schoolies weeks. I actually did two schoolies myself, I repeated year 12, so I could do two. But back in my day, it was so dangerous. It was like there were people being dragged into cars and all these gangs from the south side of Brizzy would come down and fill up long socks full of rocks and King Hit kids and people being assaulted in sand dune areas and stairwells. I was worried about my boys. I spent five years seeing the boys come out of drugs, out of alcohol, out of all these situations. I just knew in one week that could be gone. All that work I did could be blown out as they get in the wrong environment for that week. So as a youth worker, I thought, I better go look after my boys. So I went down the Goldie to visit my boys. And I've actually got a bit of footage of my first visit to school this week. This is a young mini-me back in the day when I had different colour hair and a mullet. But this will explain why I give lollies to students for a living. Let's have a look at this one. Hi, my name's Andy Goulet, aka Boss Frog. I'm here to give you the inside story on how Red Frog started. See, it all started because looking after a bunch of sketchy punk skaters up in Bris Vegas, 
They were getting up to no good, but when they got to year 12, they all went to schoolies and I went down to look after them. When I got down to the Gold Coast, I just couldn't believe how big it had gotten. It was schoolies everywhere. Had a tin of VB come off a building, like smashed just a metre from me. I uh, saw a chair come off a building into a pool. Guys doing nudie runs past you as thousands of schoolies were going past them chanting, let's go down the road, let's go down the road. So I went to visit my boys in the, in the hotel room and, and I went to get in, but there was a massive security guard who wouldn't let me in. I was ticked, I was spewing at him. But I, I sort of went down the road and I thought, oh, no, I'm not letting this fella tell me I can't look after my skaters. So the next day, I went into the hotel manager and said, look, do you want a hand at schoolies week? And she goes, oh, that sounds fantastic. Takes me into office and starts making me like cups of tea and scones. And then she goes like, how many friends can you bring down to schoolies? Just to give you an idea, like her building was 417 year olds. In every room, there's more alcohol and grog stacked up than you could chuck your nana at. And then there's more other substance floating around that you care to mention. And like two security guards and one hotel manager trying to keep a lid on 400. So we just started crashing parties just when it started going like floor to floor, finding kids passed down stairwells and found this one kid passed down the lift with a bucket on his head so we took him out of the lifts and dragged him back to the units. And so there's music belting through this door. And we knocked on this door, a little schoolie peers out and goes, who are you? He said, oh, Hotel Chaplaincy. He said, Hotel what? He said, yeah, Hotel Chaplaincy. He said, Hotel Security? It was a real hassle getting into the rooms, like really difficult getting in. And so we legged it down at the local convenience store, found this massive big box of Alan's Red Frogs. And we just grabbed this big box of frogs, went straight back up to this unit, knocked on this door, little schoolie peers out. He goes, who are you? He said, oh, Hotel Chaplaincy. He goes, Hotel what? I said, no, nah, mate, no, nah, do you want a red frog? And he goes, oh, red frogs, they're coming in, man. And he's yelling, we got frogs. And all his mates start coming off the veranda, grabbing handfuls of these red frogs. And I'm standing here with this box of lollies going, these things are amazing. Then went to the next room, knocked on the room, it was like the naked room. All they were wearing were pots and pans and stuff. And some big unit had a saucepan full of alcohol. He, he points it out, he goes, oh, drop a frog in the pond, mate, drop a frog in the pond. He had said, righto, mate, there you go. So got on the phone to our workers and said, buy the Gold Coast out of Red Frogs right now. Went to every convenience store, every cash and carry Woolies, and we got 80 kilos of Red Frogs. And they just got us into every party, just straight away. Even past the big security guards that weren't letting us in, we'd rock up, they go, where you going? Can't come in here. Mate, what a red frog. Oh yeah, bro, yeah, bro, coming in, bro. And then the next year, the council rang me again and said, Andy, can you bring your teams back? And we brought back 45 workers the next year and went through 220 kilos of frogs. And then next year, it was 90 workers and 440 kilos of frogs. Then 130 workers the next year with 880 kilos of frogs. Then the next year, 1.2 tonne of Alan's red frogs. And then now we've gone to 24 tonne a year through all our programs, reaching 70,000 schoolies in over 17 locations. We talked to 52,000 year 12s in our high school education program. We're now one of the largest support networks for schoolies in Australia. It's also one of the largest support networks in universities in Australia, as well as now music festivals, sporting events, and over all our programs, it's around 1.2 million Aussies we deal with a year. Why? Because I ride a skateboard, you know, and took some kids skateboarding three hours a week. And it's amazing, like, the power of little things, you know. Little things over a long period of time become big things if you're consistent. People think that they can't make a difference, that the issues are too big, and you don't realise that if everyone does just something, that all adds up to some big impact in life. And so it's just an amazing honour to now champion this amazing movement called Red Frog with thousands of volunteers that are involved every year. And it's just one of my greatest honours and greatest privilege to still be involved with all these young champions coming through, doing far bigger stuff than what I ever did at their age. And uh, mate, it is an absolute privilege. Well, there you go. I, I do miss my mullet. Uh, absolutely, got shaved for charity, but you know, the price you gotta pay. So now it's 70,000 schoolies and over 17 locations. Uh, also uh, 1,200 volunteers from all around Australia. 
We do three islands in Fiji. We do Bali as well, uh, which is amazing. We have a crack team that head to Bali every year and uh, 30 of them go over there and there's about 5,000 Aussies over the couple of weeks and they'll literally find kids that have actually drunk methanol instead of alcohol where their tongue starts to go white, their eyes start to burn. And they don't get out of their system, it could actually kill them. And so we airlift them to the Darwin from the International Medical Center in Bali. Uh, amazing job the guys do there. Uh, we also do the three islands in Fiji, as I mentioned, uh, with teams over there, but we go all around Australia in another 17 locations. We actually talked to 68,000 in our high school education programs. We're going to schools and all around this region as well and, and teach them how not to turn your parents out of grandparents over schoolies week and how not to get evicted from your hotel room as well. Uh, but we also have a thing called the Red Frog Hotline. And last year, we had 8,597 call-outs on the Red Frog Hotline. It's just amazing. You do get some pretty classic call-outs on the Red Frog Hotline too as kids are ringing up just a bit lonely, wanting a chat at night time. But in those 8,000 calls, we had 1,936 were for random acts of pancakes, where our teams go up into the hotel rooms making pancakes in their drinking sessions. It gets in the pre, in the preloading session. That's where most of the damage is done. So we put food in them while they're drinking, but it gets the team right place, right time. We're literally uh, making pancakes in one unit and all this water's coming out on the tile floor. We're going, what's going on here? And old mate was so drunk, he passed out in the shower, flooding the whole unit. So the team went in and saved his life basically there. Uh, but it gets us in there, uh, putting food in them, but also to see who's passed out in what room or who's doing some crazy stuff on those balconies. Uh, but the team's also... Um, we had uh, 1,633 walk home requests through our uh, call center and transport requests as well. And walk homes has been a game changer for the Red Frog teams. Uh, over Australia, it's about 5,000 walk homes we do. In fact, we broke a record last year. One team did 36.5 Ks in walk homes. Should be called Red Frog Biggest Loser over that time. It's just incredible. But in that, we've seen a 75% reduction in sexual assaults as teams are getting to young people early, passed out down the beach or. It, it, not with a good group and getting them home safely to their friend's place. So the early intervention has been amazing. But the team's got 608 alcohol intoxicants in rooms, but 133 drug ODs and drug-related the team's got to last year. Overall, though, we are seeing a big shift in youth culture. In fact, the last schoolies week was probably one of the healthiest we've seen in five years. There are so many more non-drinkers now. In fact, probably half of schoolies week aren't drinking, which is amazing. We rock into rooms and they go, oh, you just want to play Unite. We go, sure. So, and it means that when you've got more designated sober people, they're ringing earlier, so there's less that things that escalate. So, overall, there's some good positive shifts in youth culture, but what isn't shifting the right way is mental health related. And on our hotline, we had 86 mental health related call outs. And unfortunately, some do escalate where young people are thinking about permanent solutions to a temporary problem and having negative thoughts over that time. And on the Gold Coast in particular, the Queensland Health has set up this amazing thing called a mental health triage, where as we find young people that are struggling, we take them down to see clinicians straight away and they've set up a great referral area and also a great place where you can take your mates and chill out and just mentally chill out as well, which is so important. But now also, not only in schoolies, we actually do uh, university parties. We look after 400,000 in university parties. We're doing pub crawls and club crawls and toga parties, exchanges, recoveries, doing hydration stations and those. We do coffee crawls instead of pub crawls. We do uh, preload pancakes up in the resident colleges, games nights, a whole range of stuff as well. But then we also are doing high school after parties. We're getting invited to the kick-ons after formal parties and after uh, rugby carnivals, particularly one up in uh, Toowoomba Way. We did uh, a couple of years back. It's been amazing in the early intervention for sexual assaults as well. We had a young girl come up to the pancake station on this big property. We set up random acts of pancakes. We have water stations, lighting towers on this property, about 500 young people there. And this young girl comes up and goes, oh, you know, can I have some pancakes? But as she was chatting, this guy came over and started leading her off. But the team was really sharp and saw what was happening and said, oh, do you want pancakes? She goes, oh, that'd be great, pancakes. She comes back. By that time, we found a girlfriend's 
And they did realize they didn't even know who this guy was and got away safely. Just those sliding door moments are amazing. We're also doing heaps in skate parks. We've got a, a program called Skate Park Shepherds. There's 1,764 skate parks in Australia. We want one person to adopt every park to create safe places in those skate parks. And we rock up and we have set up a red frog marquee, water station, pancakes, putting some beats on, creating safe places to skate. And it was actually out in Alice Springs. And I was talking to a, 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 some parents out there and I'd just spoken at an event and they come up and said, Andy, it's great what you're doing in skate parks. Our son was one of the top skaters in Alice Springs. But now he got through the skate park, got into drugs, into crack. Now he's an addict and he's in Alice Springs prison. We visit him every week. He goes, keep going with what you're doing. We believe skate parks need to be a safe place. We've got a great skate park shepherd program. We also do sporting events as well uh, to a whole range of different uh, events around Australia. In fact, it's over 1.4 million Aussies we look after. Why? Because I ride a skateboard. Why? Because, you know, I just started skating with some young skaters a couple of hours a week. Did you know every one of us has gifts and talents and skills? Every one of us has a role to play to make a difference in our world. And sometimes we get overwhelmed. We see everything in the media and go, oh, how can I make a difference? You know, it's like we see mental health issues and drug and alcohol issues and youth crime and all these things. But how can I make a difference? But everyone has something in their hand to make a difference. So what I'm going to look at today is some keys on how you can make a difference in your world for good and for God, how you can make a difference in your life. So let's have a look at, at Boss Frog's top tips for making a difference. Number one is this. Doing something is better than nothing. Doing something is better than nothing. See, when I drove past that 7-Eleven at night, I wasn't a youth worker, I wasn't a mental health clinician, I wasn't a mental health nurse, I wasn't a counsellor. I was just studying accounting at uni. But what I could do is take those kids skateboarding week after week, month after month, year after year. See, if everyone does a little bit, it adds up to become a big answer in our world. In fact, you don't have all the answers, but you are part of the answer. As we partner with others, we can make a difference. But my challenge to you today is what's in your hand to make a difference? For me, it was a skateboard. For you, it could be a basketball. You might start a bit of a basketball comp with some local kids down your local neighborhood starting some three-on-three comps. It could be a gift of baking, or you might be the next master chef in your area. You might start baking a hundred of the best muffins known to mankind and drop them down to the local chaplain in the school. Do you know what Tuesdays be known with the local school? Muffin Tuesdays. As there's kids hanging out for the brekkie program, these hundred freshly baked muffins, you're literally impacting hundreds of kids every week. Why? Because you bake. So it might be IT might be your gift. You might be skilled in IT world and you might go to the local community care arm and local op shops and say, hey, can I revise your social media platforms to get a much bigger scope of people that you're reaching to double or triple the sales in the op shops, the feedback into the community care arm. It could be music, could be a gift. You might be a skilled muse. I know there's great places like aged care homes with so many lonely people in them. You might grab a few mates and some guitars, go down and play some tunes for the oldies down there. What a great audience. No matter how bad you are, they can't move. What a great audience to hone your gifts and skills. But see, it doesn't matter what we do as long as we do something. Second point is this, to make a difference in our world and impact our world, you can do anything you want in life if you include others. You can do anything you want in life if you include others. And we find this at schoolies. We can't do schoolies by ourselves. We need uh, AMBOs. We need police. We need Beyond Blue's mental health training. Allens and their 24 tons of red frogs they donate. We need uh, volunteer organisations, Rosie's, Drug Arm, Queensland Police. And together, we can have a red hot go. By ourselves, we'd get owned. We couldn't do it. And I think one of the healthiest places you can get to life is this, is I can't do it by myself. As soon as you get to that point, you then need others and you value others. And don't try to do everything yourself. You're not designed to do everything yourself. You're designed to work as a team. You can achieve a lot more as a team. Oh, I'm a mad sports person and I love state of origin season. And being a ramp at Queensland, I'm so passionate about Queensland. But no matter how talented Cameron Munster is, if we threw him on the field with 13 New South Wales players, we get absolutely slaughtered. But if we put some forward pack around Cameron Munster, some centres, some wingers, a fullback, suddenly we can have a red hot go at having a win. 
Buy yourself your limited. Buy yourself you can't have a win in life. You must include others. And to need others and value others is so important to achieve big things in life. Also, too, to make a difference in our world for good and for God, I believe one of the key principles is this, to learn the art of being second. To learn the art of being second. In other words, putting others first and you second. A big work we do do is in university residential colleges where there's a lot of international students that come to Australia and they don't know too many people over here. They're away from families for the first time. Some families have sacrificed everything to get their young person here to give them a, a fresh start <coughs> or a better start. But in that, how what I do is I activate the principle of learning the art of being second to actually reach out to university students to make them feel welcome and invite them into other people groups or friendship groups, I learn this principle of being second. For example, if you want to go to the movies and see the latest Marvel movie and smash them 25 cent wings on Wednesday, I'll message the uni boys up in the uni res. And if they can't go, I just go with my mates. If I want to chill out with a coffee after work and smash some nachos and play some Monopoly deal, I message the uni boys first. If they can't make it, just go with my mates. If I want to go see the Reds have a run around at Suncorp Stadium in Brisbane and I get some tickets, I'll message the uni boys first. If they can't go, I just go with my, uh, my mates. Or if I want to go for a skate and bomb some car parks with my skating and get chased by security on the weekend, I'll message the uni boys first. If they can't make it, go with my mates. See, what margins do you have in your life for others? Is your life just all about you, your friends, what you want to do? We need to expand our worlds. We need to create margins for others. And learning the art of being second, including people in what you love to do, is such a key to expand your world and have more influence in your world to be a bigger impact in your world. And finally, this last point is this, is everything big starts small. And the power of little is great. The power of little is great. I'm so thankful for three hours of my week, I stopped and skated with skaters. Week after week, month after month, year after year. If I'm really honest, the rest of the week was all about me, my career, my mates, well, my Reds membership. But for three hours of my week, I just surrendered my skateboard every Friday night to that skate park. I'm so thankful for doing that. Everything big starts small. And if I didn't do that, I wouldn't be in this amazing job and movement called Red Frogs. That, that is just an absolute dream job. See, your dream starts small, but where can you start? What can you start doing? But it's also the little things you do for people make a big impact in life. And this was evident when I was running my youth club. There was a kid named Davey, and he had a head on with this car on his treadley put him through the front windshield and um, uh, he was in hospital for five weeks with a broken pelvis. And I got my club leader, Damo, I said, mate, get a car from the servo, we'll ride in it. We got this car, we said, mate, we're just praying for you, buddy, and for your total restoration and recovery and we'll write a message in it, dropped it up the hospital. I ran into this kid about nine years ago and he comes up, he goes, Andy, do you remember me from youth club days? I go, mate, I do. I said, my mate said, how are you going? He goes, oh, good now, but I wasn't good. I got into the drugs for about nine years and it messed me up. And there are two times I wanted to give up, two times where I was just about to do something really dumb. And just before I went through with those two things, I remember that card you guys gave me and I couldn't go through with it. I just want to thank you for saving my life. Mate, floored me, absolutely floored me. Like all the hairs on the back of my neck stood up and all the hairs on my back stood up too, which is quite a few. And a dollar fifty card saved this kid's life. Never negate the power of little things. If you want to make big impact in people's lives, it's all about little things. And it's all about little amounts of time, consistent. So in summary, to make a difference in your world, what's in your hand? For me, as a skateboard, but well, what's in your hand? You can start doing something. Doing something's better than nothing. Also, you can't do this by yourself. You need to team up with others. Find others of like mind. Find others around you that you can connect with and, and work as a team. Also, too, Learn the art of being second. What margins do you have for others in your life? If your life so caught up with just your little world, but what are the margins you can have for others? And start small. Everything big starts small. I just want to pray for you uh, today and pray that, that God will bless your family and bless you, but also bring revelation this week that, hey, what's in your hand? How can I make a difference and how can I start small? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for these amazing people. I thank you we're in such a blessed country. God, that you've given us so many gifts and talents. You've given us so, such a rich country. But I thank you for the revelation that our gifts and talents aren't just for us, they're for others as well. 
And God even prompted us this week to create more margins for others. Where we're being selfish, where we're being self-seeking, God, let us not be about ourselves, but about others. And God, I pray that, that out there, there's some amazing, amazing futures, some amazing, amazing potential yet to be realized through the power of doing little and with what's in our hand. And Father, we thank you for all your goodness. We thank you for a blessing on every family listening today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you.